if you happen to be lucky, you will have people in your life tell you that the world can be anything you want it to be. And you will believe them. If you happen to be lucky, you will be doubted. You will ride the bench and you will fail. But it's not about luck. It's about what you do with what you are given. It's about attitudes, their action. It's about heart. That's what cities are made of. What champions are made of. Motion pictures, can't get enough. Cinephile, movie lover, and a big movie buff. Talking to actors, directors, innovators, athletes to writers, real trailblazers. Yeah, originator, not a duplicator. So honest, always authentic. Tune in, trust me, you don't want to miss it. This is the Monday Morning Critic. Amazing life journeys, great interviews from sports analysts, even reporters too. Captivating, always top content, bringing top quality. Everybody's talking. Yeah, originator, not a duplicator. So passionate and so authentic. Tune in, trust me, you don't want to miss it. This is the Monday Morning Critic. Keith Carney behind the Phoenix goal. Offy, out to the blue line. Chara, he shoots, he scores! And the Islanders won't go away. It's 4-3, Phoenix. Well, they score the goal because they have players in front. They get a good job on the forecheck. And the only thing Chara was thinking is get the puck on the net. And he does. Good job. Now look at all this in front. Look at this lane here. Jimmy Wade can only, he can only guess. And that's a perfect shot by Chara. Perfect shot. There it is. All the players in front. Malinsky is there. And that shot by Chara again brings the Islanders to within a goal. There's no quit in this team. They just keep coming. And for Zdeno Chara, his first in the National Hockey League. Hey, Al, you ready? Let's do it. My next guest was born in Trenton, Slovakia. His six foot nine frame puts him as the tallest hockey player in NHL history. He's the captain for a little pickup team called the Boston Bruins. He's a Stanley Cup champion, a Norris Trophy winner, and one hell of a leader. And he's absolutely beloved by Boston. His name is Zdeno Chara. Z, how are you today? How is life? And more importantly, how are you feeling? Uh, thank you for for having me. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for asking, and uh, everything is. Uh, um, yeah, really well. Um, family is good. Kids are good. Uh, we just uh, finishing the the bye week, and uh, we are back at training tomorrow. So looking forward to it. Excellent. And, and I have. I, I'm, I'm going to try something, and I know I'm going to mess it up. I practiced last night, and I'm going to try this to see if he gets it. Akosa mashish moi pratel. Is is that anywhere near what it's supposed to say? Yeah, yeah, actually, you you are very close. Ako samaj moi priatel, which is which means uh, how are you, my friend? Yes. Yeah, uh, so you, you 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 were doing some Slovak. You were doing some Slovak studying, huh? <laughs> I was trying. I'm like, I'm not gonna mess this up. I'm not gonna mess it up. So I was kind of close. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So I had I had to ask you, um, Z, what is you know? I, I saw Tom Brady's Instagram. You know, um, before last week's football game, and I don't know if you saw that video. You're in it. Paul Pierce is in it. Um, Big Poppy is in it. Did you have a chance to see that? Yeah, I have. Uh, obviously, I was uh, very overwhelmed and grateful um, that Tom included me in, in such a um, you know great um, uh, uh, you know pump up beer before before their uh, AC Championship game, and it's uh, it's obviously a huge honor for me to be included in, in that kind of a video with Paul Pierce, David Ortiz, and obviously Tom. And it's uh, um, you know it's uh, just shows you that Tom is such a um, great person. He's obviously unbelievable, um, a football player, and uh, you know he just uh, thinks uh, uh, way beyond himself. So it's just uh, um, you know 
great gesture and, and he makes everybody included. So it's, uh, it's, it was quite a, you know, honor. I'm very pleased. Yeah. And you know, when I watched that, I, I think two things, one, what, what, what New England and Boston and, and, you know, thinks of you, but, but two, how closely you and Tom are, are kind of living your, your, your lives, especially when it comes to sports, right? You guys are pretty much the same age. You guys deal with the same old questions, you know, how long are you going to play for? How long? I mean, so you guys deal with a lot of the same things on a daily basis, Z, don't you? I, I, I can't really say for sure, but it looks like it. Um, you know, I, I met Tom a long time ago. And uh, I think that we both of, both of us were kind of like uh, newcomers into the, into uh, uh, professional leagues, and uh, obviously he's done unbelievable, amazing job. You know, he's been uh, such an icon for a long, long time, and uh, uh, so you know he, he he made some adjustments. So so am I. Um, um, you know, as far as uh, uh, you know, workouts, uh, diets, uh, living our you know lives, and and being you know first and most our you know family, family people, and uh, take care of uh, the business that way. Um, but um, yeah, it's just uh, it's uh, quite challenging sometimes when uh, you are always hearing the same questions and and people always doubling uh, you know uh, us about you know performing and and uh, about our age is always coming up uh, quite often so yeah it's it's one of those but um, you know i think that we both dealing uh, dealing with it uh, um, in in a good way uh, we we try to prove people by showing uh, the performances and and how we play and how we take care of our, ourselves yeah and, and that's really well said z and what really bothers me today and is when you know you guys have to, it's almost like you guys have to after everything you've done your whole lives the two of you have to continue to a- answer those questions after you prove yourself game after game year after year uh, does does it get a little frustrating for you to, to answer okay you know how long i mean in my opinion when you're done playing you're done playing it's nobody else's business when you decide to say you know what I'm done, then you're done. But, you know, until then, I don't know, I think people should, and with Tom too, um, you know, enough is enough. It's like, I, I can't imagine any job where people keep asking you every day, is today, you know, when's, when's your last day? When, I mean, you guys are at are, are elite athletes. You're doing phenomenal work every time you guys, you know, take the ice or the field. I, I, I don't know, Z, that would bother me a lot if I was in your in your position. Um, you know, it, it gets old, but at the same time, you understand that the, the media part and, and people have questions and they're curious and they probably looking to have, you know, uh, the story, you know, for, for their publishers or, or, or TVs or radios, uh, you know, they want to be the first one to announce it or, or some kind of a, a, you know, headline news. But, um, you know, for us, I, I will, at least for speaking for myself, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. You know, when people ask, you know, I, I, I just tell them the, the honest truth and, um, you know, I just continue to, to, to play and, and, and I love the game. I love competing. I love working hard. I love com- coming to the, to the ring and being pro and, and do my job and, and, um, whether it's gonna be uh, uh, next year or year after or or, or I, I don't know when, um, it, it it really it, it it's it's not a something that that I can put you know time on it. Um, that, that this is it or or here it comes. Uh, you know uh, I don't know April 2021. That's gonna be my last day. Like who knows? Like it's just one of those things that I'm just trying to enjoy it and and keep working hard every day. And and uh, when it comes, it comes. Uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to really predict yeah well said and you mentioned you changed your diet a little bit i know you went to a plant-based diet z talk a little bit about that because that's a big change for an athlete right i mean you're you're overhauling the way you eat food and i mean that's i mean you're in phenomenal shape we're gonna get to that in a second but um yeah how to, talk about the plant-based diet what, what made you decide to do that uh well it kind of came um out of uh, you know a little bit like it wasn't really planned. I just met someone back home in Slovakia who was uh, um, training for these ultra running competitions, and uh, one of those uh, you know conversations we had was uh, you know about uh, nutrition and diet, and he just told me that he's uh, into plant based diet and. And I was quite surprised that that someone who is you know spending you know seven, eight, ten hours of running or, or some type of uh, exercising, you know, you, you see a whole bunch of different uh, 
uh, long, long distance marathons and, and ultra running uh, competitions. And these people just like are on plant based diet. I'm like, the same question that, that I've been dealing with like, where you get your proteins, where you get the energy from. And that's that's what caught my attention. And, and quite honest, I since then, I, I've been like, always trying to educate myself, reading and, and trying to gather as much um, uh, information as I could about it. And then uh, as I got deeper and deeper into it and read more and more books and talked to more and more people about uh, who, who are actually plant-based, it started to make a lot of sense to kind of like switch into plant-based and start experiencing the the benefits of uh, being, uh, you know, on that that type of a diet uh um so uh it started kind of like really um unplanned or uh it was quite just a coincidence that i met someone who was uh, um you know eating the plant base and um i made that switch uh you know uh, about 16 months ago and it's been um, you know it's been working really well i i'm very happy with it uh you know it's uh, one thing that really helps uh, recovering and um uh, performance as well, but uh, another thing is that's probably the simplest and most easiest way to really help the uh, environment around you, uh, especially you know what we're dealing right now with the climate change and, and so on. Yeah, no, that's well said. And I had an actor who was on the original A team who did who switched his diet. He said he he says it sw- it saved his life. See, but it's not a plant based. It's like a macrobiotic diet, which occasionally allows like fish, but is based on you know you know plants. And beans and he swears it saved his life so uh yeah i i, I mean the long-term effects seem to be very promising yeah exactly you know it's uh, it's one of those things that people don't realize that uh it's not just eating salad every day um you know it's just uh you know you have so many uh plant-based proteins uh they are actually um, very uh, much, you know, more beneficial than than animal proteins. Uh, you know, it's it's not just uh, people. Sometimes they get confused. How can you just eat just veggies all day long? Well, it's it's not just the veggies. It's like so many other things that you can add to it and make a very uh, different kind of plates, a variety of uh, choices, and uh, it's actually a lot of fun when you prepare uh, meals for yourself. Now, now, see, I know you're very. And we're going to get to this too. You're very independent. You're very. You're always looking, you know, to, to become more educated, to improve yourself. Um, did you did you come up with your own uh, like recipes and, and menu for what you eat during the week, or do you have help with a nutritionist for that? I know I know you were talking to somebody that was a, a runner, but how do you develop what you eat? Is that something you do on your own, or, or do you have help with that? Well, in these days, it's very simple and very easy. You just. Uh, uh, just a matter of few clicks you can go on different websites you can go uh, uh, um, follow different people uh, through the social medias and there is uh, uh, hundreds of different recipes or, or options you can choose from uh, there's books out there there's uh, yeah there's a lot of material you can you can choose from but um, I, I always like to uh, kind of mix it up and create my own kind of meals or recipes and, and that's just the way uh, I always been um, so sometimes Sometimes I want to have something sweeter. Sometimes I want to have something more on, uh, uh, you know, bitter side. So it's just kind of like, uh, yeah, um, you, you just have to kind of go with what you feel like, and um, that's the that's the way I like it. So I have to ask you this: if it's none of my business, you can tell me. I, I know you don't drink. You 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 don't have any part of alcohol. Um, what do you do for fun? Because I mean, everyone, even the most, you know, the, the I mean, are you sound like you're somebody you're committed to your diet. What, is there like a cheat day, or is there a something that you eat for fun is there something that you love to eat that you you know on that one once an occasion you'll have um well fun i i, I have three kids so i um you know the most fun i have is uh when i spend uh, you know all my all my free time with my kids uh, oh that's it's very o- sweet it's overwhelming sometimes but uh uh you know i love them uh, obviously the most and uh you know uh, you know anytime i have a free free time i love to spend it with my kids um you know they are at that age where 
they need a lot of attention and um, uh, we try to both of obviously with my wife we try to give it to them as much as we can but away from uh, from uh, from my family when we are on the road uh, honestly I love to read books I love to go see some nice movie or, or you know just to walk around a little bit uh, um, yeah it's just uh, I'm, I'm not much of uh, you know bar go- outgoing guy or, or a partying uh, kind of a person um, I think I had my share of fun when I was uh, uh, you know, in my in my teenager uh, years, but uh, that quite uh, changed uh, d- dramatically, uh, uh, you know, many years ago. So I kind of like to uh, like to take it easy. Yeah, it's really well put. Really beautiful uh, way of thinking. And, and you, you know, Z, you mentioned you, why we're on topic of kids. When you were a kid, I mean, you were cut three times. Um, you know, when you were on uh, on the you know 12, 11, 13 year old hockey team, people always seem to know what's best for you, Z. Um, do you ever? Is that part of what makes you so you know, the dedicated and and really stringent person you are? Do you do you do you still does that drive you proving people wrong, or is it just a matter of kind of it's who you are? I think that uh, that's a great question. I think this kind of uh, a personality or dri- or driven driven uh, attitude uh, developed quite quite early. Like you said, I've been cut by. Uh, by coaches very early on um, when I played youth hockey and then when I played the juniors and and you know it just kind of like makes you more resilient and um, kind of like you you're, you're able to take those uh, obstacles or challenges quite uh, quite better uh, you know you see it you know happening quite often that you have these young talented players coming in and nothing is really being challenged for them um, uh, uh, you know, coming up, and all of a sudden they come and, and they start playing. You know, uh, at higher level, and they being you know said sat down or scratch, and all of a sudden they, they have no idea how to deal with it. So I think that um, you know dealing with some type of uh, challenges early on makes it the kids quite tougher yep. I believe uh, I, and they, they can they can you know you know kind of drive from that experience and. Uh, they know how to deal with it, and I think that's what happened to to me when I was very young. I, I had to overcome a lot of these challenges, and and that I think made me, you know, better at the end. You know, towards towards when I was older to to deal with some of the challenges I had to face. Yeah, that that's that's beautifully said as well. And, and you know, I got to say, I was just reading about you as a kid. You sound. Like, I mean, it sounds like from the start of it, you you were just a, a good solid. Forget the hockey stuff. You were just a good solid human being i thought i read somebody somewhere we're in kindergarten you stuck up for a friend i mean we talk about things that happen when we're younger it's amazing how this you know i'm when you're on the ice how many times are you sticking up for one of your teammates it's amazing how when we're younger we carry that with us years later you know z I, I, I really do uh, believe that you are either born with it or or, or not. Um, you you, you got to have some type of leadership in you and that kind of a stand-up uh, attitude or stand-up uh, uh, personality. Uh, and I, I, I remember that when I was obviously in the very, very young age, we were in kindergarten or, or pre-K and, and uh, there were there were a few bigger kids picking up on my friend and I just uh, stood up and and tried to obviously protect my friend. But um, I, I think I always been that type of a person that uh, didn't take any crap from anyone uh, yeah. I tried to obviously push back and uh, stand up for my own um, so um, yeah it's 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 one of those things that my, my my parents always taught me you know to be humble to be polite to be thankful to always uh, say a word please thank you hello goodbye and and um, those are small words but they go a long ways and always you know they always kind of said hey if, if it's right it's right you should stand for what's right so so that's what I've been kind of doing so yeah that's great and and, and, and I love how, I love I mean, it, it, there's so much truth to that I, I wanted to ask you about two people in your life you mentioned your dad because I, I had that question your dad taught you four things you know please thank you greet people respectfully good say goodbye um how do I pronounce your dad's name is, he, is it Z- Zdenek is that how you say it yeah, yeah. So it's very similar to my name, but because he's uh, uh, he was born in Czech Republic. Well, it, 
let me get back. Well, we were both born in Czechoslovakia. Right. So back then it was Czechoslovakia. So uh, there were actually, you know, two parts of the uh, country speaking um, um, different, a little bit different language. It's a, it was the same country, but it was a Czech, Repu- Czech, Czech side and Slovak side. And later on in, in uh, early 90s, we split up into two different countries. But uh, my dad was born on the Czech side. My mom was born, obviously, on the Slovak side. My dad uh, came to Slovak side to to serve the uh, uh, professional army duty. Uh, there was uh, uh, mandatory for every uh, 18 year old to serve. Uh, back then it was two years, uh, so that's uh, it was kind of like an exchange side. So Slovak uh, men went to Czech side, Czechs, Czech Czech uh, men went to the Slovak side, and that's how he got hooked up with my mom. And and the rest of it is obviously history. Uh, so yeah, the Zdenek is basically Basically, Czech uh, phrase or Czech name for Zdeno, so which is my uh, my name, but it's uh, it's in Slovak pronunciation. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And I, and I got to tell you, when I was just researching your life, your dad's life seems equally as impressive. You know, he he seemed to always believe in you. He's a cyclist, a trainer, Greco-Roman wrestler. Um, so I have to ask, and if, if this is none of my business, please tell me, was he tough on you? Was he? And I know he taught you really well because you're you're always talking about him in interviews. Um, are, are you grateful for him pushing you? Was he like, was he a, a cool dad kind of combined with a dad who didn't take any shit for, you know, an answer? Was he talk about what your dad was like and how you're what you learn from him making making the person you are today? Well, my dad was, a, a, you know, he was a Greco-Roman wrestler, so he was a fighter, and he was a, a quite successful. He was very, um, very good at what he did. He was, a, I think, he 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 was like eleven time a, a, a Czechoslovakia national champ in his weight class. Um, so he 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 implemented this kind of like. Uh, exercise, exercising roots at very early age for both of me and my sister. So anytime he went for you know jog or some type of a run or or uh, or hike or or he was just doing some type of workouts at home, he tried to include us. Um, and um, yeah, he was tough. Yeah, he, there was no uh, many you know negotiations. He, <laughs> he, he was he was he was either that or or. Or you, you got you got punished. So it was a little bit different era. It was different time, but yeah, definitely he he we were disciplined. We were very respectful to our parents, and uh, yeah, he he was you know he taught us how to be how to be you know how to how to listen on on the first word you know, what he said. So it, it was not uh, no other choices. Uh, it was you know. Said and done. <laughs> so, uh, is, is your dad still with us, Z, or is, has he passed? Yeah, no, he's uh, he's still alive. He's uh, obviously living uh, back home. Um, so, you know, he's just uh, enjoying his retirement right now. And uh, yeah, so everything is good. What I mean, this is probably a stupid question, but it's, he must be so proud of you. I mean, not not because you're in the NHL, but just because the because of the human being you've become. I mean, his he must be so proud of all of it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm sure he is. It's. It's. Uh, you know. I. I know he is. It's. It's. It's nothing better than you know. Parent experiencing and, and enjoying the success of 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 their kids. Um, you know. I. I think that that's all we wish for. We all want to have. Uh, you know, successful uh, uh, children. We all want to have uh, the joy to see them uh, being um, happy and and celebrating their their you know accomplishment. So it's one of those things that. Uh, uh, any any parent will tell you there's there's no uh, uh, better pleasure than seeing your kids do well. Yeah, that that's well said. And the other person I wanted to ask you about, um, uh, and I hope I have her name right, is your wife Tatiana. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, you said actually really well, Tatiana. Yeah, she, I mean, and what I love about you is that not only physically, you know, your work, your diet, your, your, your workout routine, but you're always pushing yourself to learn, to, to gain knowledge. You're never complacent. And she really helped and pushed you to kind of get, go and get a degree. Am I right with that? Yeah, yeah, you are. And, and obviously without her help. 
uh, I would never accomplish that. I would never even open the books. She was always the one that she said, you know what, like, it's, it's good for you to read this. You don't have to memorize it. You don't have to go for uh, certificates or titles or any of that. You just need to read this. You just need to have knowledge when you speak to the person uh, on the other side, uh, across the table that, that explain to you about your, for example, your financial status or, or things that are happening in the world. So you have at least idea, you have a clue. So, um, and she's 100% right. There's nothing worse than and being clueless and have no idea what's going on, what's happening. And then you just absolutely depend on other other people's decisions. And that's when you actually, uh, you know, lose probably some money or um, even uh, uh, hold of what's what's happening. And that's, that's, a, that's a major problem, I believe, in these days that, uh, you know, you have a lot of young people young, uh, 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 kids coming up and they they get you know they get you know successful they 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 sign big contracts which is all great but then you know they they rely everything on on single person or two people uh, and they just you know they don't know what's going on they don't know what's happening and all of a sudden they just find out maybe a few years years later that hey what's what's going on I had this much and now it's only this little so uh, you have to be careful you have to do you have to do your part and um, going back to what uh, what you said about my wife I'm, I'm so lucky that I, I, I have her because she's uh, she's always uh, um, emphasizing hey you know make sure you read this make sure you you go over it and and whatever sticks sticks and if you need to read it twice then read it twice uh, just make sure that you understand what they're saying you understand what what's happening and and uh, then you you are you are the ones who, who's gonna make decision don't just rely on somebody else to make a decision for you because they are not going to take that blame and pay you, pay you the money back. Right. Right. You, you know, she sounds like an, an amazing, amazing person. And just so people that are listening, uh, Z is a financial advisor. You hold a real estate license, just a, a few of the things that people know. Am mm -hmm. I, am I correct on both of those things? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I um, I got uh, the uh, certified financial uh, uh, certification many years ago. It was in Ottawa. It was probably like 15 years ago, uh, which I honestly did just for my knowledge. It was nothing that I am planning to do, and and you know I'm I'm not into um, going uh, you know from door to door and and ask people to invest uh, in you know different companies or or uh, you know asking for for that type of uh, investments uh, it was just strictly for my knowledge to to have kind of uh, idea what's what's happening uh, and the real estate license I, I I I was kind of always interested in uh, in the real estate it's it's tangible I I, I love the way uh, the way everything is being handled you you talk to people um, you're negotiating you handling the legal side of it uh, so it, it's a lot of fun and uh, so I decided to to get that and 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 we'll see where, where it's going to happen. Uh, you know, once I'm done, maybe I'll I'll use it. Maybe I don't. But uh, just uh, just uh, something that uh, it, it it was kind of like uh, again uh, I, I wanted to wanted to do. Yeah, and you know, I'm a big believer that great people are surrounded by other great people, and and you certainly have your whole life, whether it's your dad or or Tatiana. Are you a believer of that? That good, good great people have really great people not not below them but like great people that are in their lives and, and and like like your wife adds to you know what wonderful advice she gives to you right are you a believer in that z to some degree i i do i do believe that that uh, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room but you just have to be smart about who you're surrounding uh, mm. yourself with uh, yes so it's it's one of those like you know a lot of a lot of people uh they, they try to always kind of almost force the relationship uh, relationships with uh, with with certain type of uh people but you know what like it's it's not about you know how much the person makes or what his status is or how many followers he has or um you know what is his title um it's more about just uh you feeling comfortable talking to the person uh and and be be comfortable enough to share the uh kind of like the 
the, some of the things you wouldn't share with anyone kind of like, uh, you know, you, you need that support. You need that, you know, that bond with, with certain people around, uh, surrounding yourself that you feel comfortable to, to make maybe further decisions based on the conversations you have with them. So it's, it's all about trust. It's all about the friendship. It's all about, uh, you know, communication and, uh, not about, uh, the status, title, followers, money, and so on. Yeah. Well said. And you know, it's amazing because you're, you're, you, you're always becoming, like I said, a better person. You're never complacent. You know, how many times do you read about actors or athletes or whoever that at one time were, you know, were 50, 100, 250 million people that clearly were surrounding themselves with the wrong people, and now they kind of have nothing. You're the exact opposite of that, right? You have great people around you. You're a smart human being. So, so that's that. That's going to work for you one day. There's no question, Z. Well, I, I hope so. But I mean, it's it's very unfortunate. Sometimes you get caught up. Uh, uh, on the wrong side and don't get me wrong I made my share of mistakes uh, just like probably everybody else but uh, you try to learn from them and move on uh, but uh, obviously and now you, you, you try to obviously be very careful who who you trust uh, who you uh, kind of uh, hang out with and um, uh, yeah try to separate that a little bit yeah and I wanted to ask you so 96 you're, you're drafted 56 by the Islanders you're alone in Prince George for that year you do odd jobs car wash did you get homesick at that time of your life z no 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 not at all uh it was just one of those uh um parts of my life where i knew i had to really dig deep uh, to stay focused to stay uh on uh, on the right track and um I kept myself very uh, very um um kind of uh discipline um i was i was i was looking after myself uh in a, in a way almost that that uh i was hard on myself very hard uh, very very um no 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 breaks no um um no any uh type of uh um i i i, I want to say uh, Kind of, I, I, I was, I was almost like a parent and 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 myself in one one person. I was right. hearing that voice that, hey, make sure you you do this, make sure you do that, you stay away from this. Um, so, yeah, it was it was one of those things. I, I I felt that I had to really stay sharp, and that's the age when you hit 17, 18, 19, where you can get really easily distracted and and end up on the wrong 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 side or wrong road um i i left home and i couldn't couldn't go, come back because of the um army service that we, we we at that time was still mandatory it was 18 months wow and, uh if i would go back after the draft they would um take me right away to that service and i would not be able to play hockey probably for 18 months and that would be game over um mm. so I had to stay away from Slovakia. Uh, I couldn't go back for two years. And um, so I lived with my billets uh, uh, after the season. I, uh, and I knew that once the team stopped uh, paying them for uh, uh, for the food and, and everything that uh, they, were, they were getting paid for during the season, I had to find jobs to provide uh, the finance to, to the family. So, uh, I know that they were okay with me staying there and they would never, um, you know, felt that, Hey, I had to pay them back, but I just felt that was my responsibility. And, and, uh, so I found two jobs. One was the car wash and, um, the other one was the landscaping. So I was doing uh, two jobs, uh, Two, two, two jobs and still um, were, were able to work out uh, twice a day. So it was kind of a long day. It's very hard, uh, hard days, but uh, um, I wanted to contribute. I wanted to do something that I could to support uh, myself and uh, still uh, uh, live in, uh, in North America and be ready for the training camp uh, when I showed up in uh, uh, New York. Wow, that's amazing. And, you know, you play for Ottawa, right? Long story short, you, you eventually come, become a Bruin in 2006. What's the city meant to you and your family? And, and um, are you going to, do you think you'll stay here after whenever it is you decide to uh, hang up the skates? 
Um, we love Boston. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a great city. It's a great place to live. Um, all my children were born here. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, so far it's been it's been really really you know good to us. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we 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 hope that we we can stay and and continue to live here. But as 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 you probably know, it's. Uh, uh, it's never out of the question that when the kids decides to, let's say, do some type of a sport, they yep. need need to have all year round a warm climate. And then maybe we will uh, do it for uh, for the kids because I want to give them the best chance I, I can to to have fun, to to do what they love. And if uh, if that's uh, what's gonna take to move to maybe a warmer climate, yeah, we might have to do that. But uh, as of right now, we love. Uh, we absolutely love the city of Boston. It's a great city. It's a great sports city, greatest fans, and, uh, yeah, uh, we love it. Yeah, and one thing is for sure, uh, no one's going to wear 33 at the TD Garden again for hockey or basketball. So uh, that's that's kind of a good feeling, I think, Z. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Obviously, I, uh, I can't speak for others, but I'm um, just trying to do my job, um, do it well. I do my best, and uh, whatever happens after, it's... Uh, it's 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 gonna happen, but um, I just uh, try to really stay focused and do my job. So obviously, I mean, anybody been listening to this interview, they know why you're the captain, right? Because of all the un- unbelievably, you know, just leadership qualities you have, the the, the way you present yourself. Um, have you forget the on ice stuff, you know, playing time or something like that? As captain, do you ever have players pull you? And obviously, you don't have to say names or anything like that. But do you ever have players pull you aside and say? You know, I got a lot going on in my life outside of hockey, and I'm trying my best. Are you? I don't, I don't want to say the word therapist, but sometimes are you more than just a teammate? Like, as a captain, do you take on a role of? I don't want to say therapist, but I'll say it for because I, I can't think of a better word. But or like, you know, a counselor. You're you're listening, and do you? Am I accurate with that a little bit? Does that happen? Yeah, yeah, and you are, and and um, you have to remember, like we are hockey players, we are professionals, but um, don't forget, like number one, we are human beings. So sure. there's 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 uh, you know, in many occasions, uh, many times happened that uh, we had conversations with with different players um, far beyond just the hockey, far beyond just the system, and and uh, you know what's happening on the ice. So uh, we, we we try to make sure that everybody feel feels comfortable and it's not just uh, uh, me talking to them it's it's uh, I always said that you know a leadership is something that you have to share you can't be just uh, uh, try to control it on your own and so uh, obviously I, I said it many times uh, uh, Patrice Bergeron has been been uh, my teammate the longest and we've been together the longest on this team so we we really try to take care of things together and 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 share that responsibility and and if there is an issue or there is a situation that we need to deal with we try Try to do it together and make the best plan possible to uh, uh, to solve it. And yeah, it goes it goes far beyond you know just hockey. It, it, it's a it's a lot of you know things that uh, uh, you know stays stays in the locker room, stay between us, and uh, we completely understand that uh, um, there's uh, you know situations like I said that uh, players need support, they need a device, they need uh, um, you know just friend to talk to. So com- communication is the huge huge uh, huge part of uh, uh, making things work. Work. Yeah, well said. And, you know, I mean, they, they've seen what you've done. And, I mean, you're probably, I mean, I, I know your teammates, but a lot of them have always looked at you and look up to you, I would think. I mean, maybe, you know, um, but that's just an amazing thing. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, I, I, I've read, I want to say over the years, three or four stories where you're on the other end of a, of a make-a-wish. How does that feel, Z, when you have a kid who's, you know, not, you know, not doing great, you know, maybe doing, you know, having, you know, a, a tough time, but their make a wish is to be around you or to be around the Bruins that's got to feel I mean it's tough because of what make a wish is I mean it's a it's a beautiful just beautiful organization but how does that make you feel as a human being uh, very humbling um, it's it's a it's a privilege that you could actually be um, a, a somebody else uh, a wish um, to meet or to spend time with or um, you know, send greetings. Um, so it's very humbling. I never thought that, uh, obviously growing up and, and, you know, 
playing hockey that um, I'd be playing NHL. Uh, you know, I, I believed that I could be a good hockey player. I believed, and and obviously, longer I played, I believed more and more. Uh, but this is obviously way beyond playing, way beyond career, way beyond Stanley Cups, way beyond everything else. It's just, uh, you know, you are um, maybe a, 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 a person that, that other uh, people other other kids are looking up to so so it's a uh, it, it's a uh, it's something that uh, I take it to the to the bottom of my heart and and I feel very privileged and, and honored that uh, I could meet these people I can I can spend time with them and uh, hopefully you know make a difference in their lives and and uh, in, in positive way and when I asked you what, what, what one of the things you love to do away from you know what do you do for fun you mentioned your own kids so I can only imagine how wonderful you are with these kids uh, yeah I mean it's a uh, yeah I, uh, sometimes I think that I'm way too soft <laughs> because I, I know I know how uh, how hard it was on me when my dad was kind of uh, tough on me but uh, uh, I think there is a right time and the right place to do it but uh, there is nothing better than than giving uh, when you when you give kids kids something when you when you make them happy when you get that smile when you get those hugs and kisses that's that's just uh, that's just uh, one of those uh, things that you can you can buy you can um, get anywhere else uh, so it, whether I'm speaking for my own children or or uh, kids that we see as a team and go through different visits uh, you know that's why we we love to do that um, we just love to make other families children involved and happy and and make them in, make make them feel important yeah that's beautiful stuff see I have a few more questions do you have time for a few more yeah, I got uh, about yeah five more minutes. Yeah, sure. Beautiful. Uh, so you speak seven languages. I know you've heard this a lot: Slovak, Czech, Polish, Swedish, Russian, German, English. Um, I can speak a little Polish, but let me ask you: Is it? I mean, that's a super sign of intelligence. They say the ability to learn languages. I mean, I know you're probably not as fluent in all of them, but th th that's amazing. I mean, how many times do, do you get a chance to use a lot of them on? on you know, during your, you know the the day, or do you? Is this one of those things where you, it's not always you're not always speaking a lot of these? Well, that's exactly the problem that I don't get to use them very often, uh, and that's uh, that's when you start forgetting. Uh, so, yeah, um, most most of the time, obviously, it's a, it's a Slovak, Czech, and English, but. Uh, uh, you know, German and Swedish, I forgot a lot. And I mean, a lot. I, I did my final exams in, in German in my high school. And uh, I, sp I spoke fluently in German. And now I, 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 I s try to speak to German people and I hardly get by. Uh, Swedish, the same thing. I was in Sweden playing during the lockout in 2004. And in about five months, I was able to, at the end of the fifth month, I was able to just speak fluently Swedish. And the same thing, like now I'm trying to speak Nor Nordy and it's like I don't know what he's saying. It's like <laughs> well, I'm sure if I would go if I go back and start kind of like uh, speaking and reading and, and writing, it would come back quite quite quickly. But uh, it's one of those things, you know, just like anything else. You don't use it, you lose it. So so um, yeah, I, I, I'm very proud that uh, uh, I was able to get as many languages as I did, uh, especially growing up with. Uh, uh, two languages at home, mom, Slovak, dad, Czech. We were under the communist regime of Russia, so Russian was kind of mandatory. Then I got to high school, I pick up German and English. Uh, so it's kind of like I got, before I, I hit um, you know, I was before I was 18 years old. I was able to speak four or five languages. So wow. that came kind of quite, quite, quite fast and quite easy. You know, at, at a very young age, you can you can pick up a lot of languages. So uh, the plan is the the same with my children. I'm trying to uh, obviously they're growing up with Slovak, Slovak and English, English. But as soon as they get like to grade, you know, fifth, sixth grade, are we gonna throw another languages at them? So because that's a, that's a huge, huge advantage to have. Oh, I, I totally agree. I think being bilingual or trilingual, I, I think it's absolutely necessary. And let me ask you, you're a big uh, bicycle guy. Um, in season, when the weather's nice, how many miles do you bike a week? 
Uh, it depends. Um, I used to do a lot of uh, a lot of writing. I don't do as much as uh, you know as I would like to, uh, because I'm trying to focus on different parts of my training. But I used to put up uh, you know five, uh, I would say 500 miles a week. So wow. you know, on, on the average, probably 80, 90 miles a, a day uh, I would ride. Um, so probably towards the uh, end end of the month, I would be around 2,000. Uh, uh, you know, between 1,500 to 2,000 miles uh, somewhere in there in those uh, days when I was like complete fanatic about about cycling. Yeah, and I thought I read where you know you had a couple different bikes located in different parts of the world, and you and you used to do this some stages of the uh, of the Tour de France, right? Yeah, yeah, and and exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I I would I would you know obviously get to know a few pro cyclists, and um, you know uh, it was great to kind of talk to them about training, talk to them about diets, and and uh, once we get you know got to be good friends, then I went to see them at Tour de France and and Giro Italias, and so yeah, I just uh, instead of traveling with one bike and and relying on on airlines and and getting the bike you know scratch or bent or whatever, I just bought like. Uh, bikes um, uh, that I could leave in different locations and didn't have to worry about that. I just, you know, landed, pick up the bike, rode, yeah, and back, drop it back, back, and then. Uh, so, yeah, I, I love it. I, I just feel so free when I'm uh, riding outside. And um, the, uh, another great, you know, things for training that there is no one else who can pedal for you. You just have to really dig deep and 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 experience those pains in your legs but you have to push through yeah and you were at harvard uh, i think it was last summer doing a sports management social media thing which adds to you're always learning is, is it true your body fats at like five or six percent yeah yeah it is oh my um, god I, th- <laughs> I think it's about that yeah about five or six or something like that so um, yeah, like I said, I take a lot of pride in my in my in my training, a lot of pride in uh, my uh, you know physical shape, and uh, I think that uh, why wouldn't you? If, if that that's your job, you have to you have to respect it. You have to um, do what's uh, what's best. And um, yeah, I'm I'm trying to obviously set a great example, and and uh, we 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 set that you know on this team for a long time, and we try to follow those. Uh, those uh, those standards wow well said my very last question to you my friend uh give me a final prediction for the, uh, the super bowl next sunday oh i gotta go with new Eng- england obviously um so i don't know the score but i think that uh, um uh obviously we all we all cheer cheer them on so uh go pats i mean i i, I there's nothing more that i would love to see than than Pats win Super Bowl and, and celebrate again and and um, yeah they deserve it I think they they overcome a lot of challenges uh, a lot of doubts and um, not many people believe in them and um, you know the way they carry themselves the way they go about the business and uh, always look forward and always uh, facing these challenges I, I I just love the the resiliency and the toughness they have the mental you know toughness they have so yeah go pats and and wish them all the best he's the captain number 33 zadeno chara z thank you so much for coming on my show today no this is this is great a lot of fun so thank you for having me 